Hello and welcome to another episode of 7 on Sunday right here on ARTV. My name is John and today we're going to be talking about bands that got famous from doing what? From working hard, from putting themselves out there, from relentless touring. No, we're talking about bands that got famous from cover songs. Covering somebody else's song, their body of work, their heart and soul possibly has been a tried and true method of actually gaining fame for decades now. I'm not calling it necessarily a cheap trick, I'm just kind of calling it like it is. These bands just so happen to really take off and maybe eventually go nowhere after covering somebody else's track. Some of the bands that we're going to talk about today went on to become some of the biggest bands in the world. In fact, one of them is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And then other bands here were quickly forgot about because that cover song that blew up it was just a fleeting high. Before we get started with the official list, I did want to give a special shout out to what would be the number eight placement, possibly. This was a very hard list to put together because the criteria was so specific and there's just not a ton of bands that I feel have only blown up because of a cover song. I think that there's obviously always other contributing factors too, but Goldfinger are the special shout out today. They covered the Nina track, a German band that was originally released in the 1980s. The song is in the English translation at least, 90 99 Red Balloons, and that along Superman are really their two known hits. So yeah, a special shout out to Goldfinger, and other than that, let's get started with this episode. Oh, he's talking about the Joe Bros? Mmm. Oh, that's ace. That is some quality content that I signed up for. Yes, indeed, we're talking about the Jonas Brothers, because at number seven, we have their cover of the busted track, Year 3000. They obviously changed some of the lyrics to make it even more Radio Disney friendly, even though I don't think the initial edit was really all that vulgar or anything. I, I suppose you gotta mix it up for the kiddos. The Jonas Brothers are quintessentially the group that so many people, if you grew up in the mid to late 2000s decade, then you know the Jonas Brothers. Maybe you hated them, maybe you actually loved them, maybe your walls were covered in Kevin Jonas posters. Just kidding. No one loved Kevin. <laughs> Oh man, that sounded a lot darker than I wanted it to. What I meant to say is that Nick and Joe were the popular brothers and Kevin didn't always get as much love. This Disney Channel friendly band's debut album was titled It's About Time and it featured three cover songs. In fact, two of those were busted covers, so you could say that the Joe Bros were totally influenced by them. Year 3000 was an exciting track and it was actually my introduction to it, but obviously after I heard the busted version, uh, yeah, it definitely beats out the Joe Bros. Sorry. This definitely put them on the map, though, because Disney Channel took notice of these guys and their kind of friendly sound that they took on and adapted, and they were like, this is what we're gonna push. I mean, these guys are rocking the purity rings. This is gonna be great for airplay. We can push the music videos in between blocks on our programming schedule, and that's exactly what they did. They eventually starred in the films Camp Rock and Camp Rock 2, and of course their own show Jonas, which don't ever watch that, it's so, so bad. Dare I say, one of the best cover songs of all time, and one of the ones that I feel kind of transcends the original in many ways. At number six, we have the Ataris, a pop punk band, and their cover of Boys of Summer, originally by Don Henley, the vocalist for famed rock band The Eagles. You probably have heard all of those names before, but maybe you don't associate Boys of Summer as being a cover song. This is a track that pretty much still to this day takes over alternative radio. Rock stations still play it. Even, I think I heard a classic station playing it and I was like, shouldn't you be playing the original? There's a few minor changes to the track. Obviously the pacing is very different and they added their own touches. They made it a more pop punk style thing with a lot of energy and there is a lot of great vocal presence there. But I could not name another song by this band. I really couldn't. I know the name of the album that it appeared on was Astoria, but outside of that, what do I know? I actually caught a bit of the Atari set at Warped Tour 2017, and they really didn't attract a very big crowd. I'm sure they definitely have some devoted fans, but outside of this song that caught fire for them, they really didn't have much of a chart presence. You can see that this one did tear up the charts and it definitely had a lingering presence, still does to this day, but it's one of those things where covering somebody else's song and then riding that wave 
didn't exactly pan out for long-term commercial success. While most of us have probably forgotten the name of the last band, the Ataris, you most certainly know the name of the next one, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Did you know that before their cover of Higher Ground, originally by the legend himself, Stevie Wonder, the Chili Peppers were more of a local sensation, more so localized to California, the area that they were playing in, and then everything changed with that cover of Higher Ground. The band made a ballsy decision and put out Higher Ground as the lead single from their 1989 album Mother's Milk, which is now considered a classic by many. Now, you probably saw them performing this at their Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction in 2012, the jam session that featured the likes of Billy Joe Armstrong, so many other legends up there on stage like Slash shredding alongside the band. But before they got to do all of that, it all started with this cover song that caught fire and then other songs started charting. And by the time their next album came out in 91, they were one of the biggest bands in the world. Metalcore, pop punk, good times, fun live shows, these are probably all things that you associate with the band A Day to Remember, but do you think back to 2008 and a certain cover of a Kelly Clarkson song? This is actually what catapulted them in a very major way. This alongside their obvious talent and their album Homesick, which had several successful singles. But in 2008, before Homesick was an actual reality, we had this cover song of Since You've Been Gone, originally by Kelly Clarkson. The American Idol winner of season one had a lot of hits under her belt, and the day to remember put their own spin on this track, which featured screaming, some intensity, and it actually is one of my favorite cover songs ever. They released their album For Those Who Have Heart, their sophomore effort in 2007, and the band ended up re-releasing an album with Victory Records in 2008 because they weren't quite ready to put out a new studio album. On that re-release, they included the cover song Since You've Been Gone, and what do you know, the song started blowing up on MySpace and the band became more of a household name, especially in the quote unquote scene of the time. The rest is history. The band are huge at this point. They have their own self help music festival, and I do respect them, even though I don't like all of their stuff. They're a very heavy band. They also have their pop punk tendencies, and I think they're extremely talented, but it all started at least in a more major way with the cover of Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> The A Day to Remember cover was a perfect segue into my next pick, which is the band Framing Hanley, who blew up on the likes of their Lollipop cover, originally by Lil Wayne featuring Static Major. This is a cover song that is definitely hard to listen to in some ways, but I said it was a perfect segue because this was during the MySpace era, those latter years where it was kind of fading out but still very popular with the scene. And between like 2007 to 2009, that's when Framing Hanley were really gaining momentum. And while this wasn't the song that gained the attention of the labels, Hear Me Now was that track, but Lollipop is the one that had them charting on the Billboard Hot 100. After the label decided to re-release their debut album and include the Lollipop cover, the band really started gaining momentum, booking lots of shows. I remember hearing all about them and even wanting to go see them in concert because I loved that. And as a result of Lollipop getting big, their song Hear Me Now caught fire and I still love that track to this day. I'll be honest, even though I am kind of nostalgic for Framing Hanley and their cover of Lollipop, I don't care for that cover, it's kind of trashy to me at this point, but it's still kind of fun in an odd way. I do love other songs of theirs, although I'm not familiar with everything, and I do want to give them a shout out. They dropped a new track after coming back from their hiatus, Puzzle Pieces is the name of the song, and if you're curious, check it out, it's actually pretty solid. Climbing closer and closer to the top at number two, we have the classic 1985, not just by Bowling for Soup, but also by the original authors, the band SR71, a pop punk group on their album from 2004, Here We Go Again. Now, you might not know that this was somebody else's track, 
but actually Bowling for Soup and SR71, they were friends and they quickly contacted them after the release of their album, Here We Go Again, saying, hey, can we re-record 1985 for our album, A Hangover You Don't Deserve? The band obviously consented, and the rest is history. You know 1985 by Bowling for Soup because it's a staple of the pop punk genre. You'll sing along to the lyrics, which were definitely altered slightly from the original. There's some new references, some other things that are thrown in. Obviously, the mix is different in this playing style. It's a bit changed. I actually do like both versions of the track, but I much prefer the Bowling for Soup edition because that's the one that I grew to love, as did most people. In fact, a lot of people still to this day do not know that that is a cover song, and this obviously launched Bowling for Soup into pop punk stardom for the time because, yes, they've got other songs, but most people are probably going to say either, oh, what's a Bowling for Soup song? They're probably going to name 1985 or else Girl All the Bad Guys Want. Honestly, how could this not be number one? Smooth Criminal, Annie, you okay? Alien Ant Form? No, not originally. Obviously, MJ Michael Jackson, a classic there. A throwback that was brought back to life in the early 2000s by the name Alien Ant Farm, who, show of hands, can anybody name any other tracks from them? As were several of the other songs on this list, like Boys of Summer, this is a radio staple still to this day for rock and alternative stations. You will flip it on and you will hear the chugging guitars. Dun, 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 dun. It was inescapable, and I heard this song, and for the longest time, when I was a kid, I was naive, I didn't really have access to the internet all the time, I didn't know that this was a Michael Jackson track. I thought, oh, this is Alien Ant Farm, and some weird song that they wrote about Annie. Who the hell is Annie, and is she okay? This is not an awful cover by any means. In fact, I can rock out to this song. It's fine. You can cut loose to it. It's a nice rock version, I suppose, of the original track. But this was huge for Alien Ant Farm, a band that didn't have their name on the map at all. It tore up the Hot 100, the modern rock charts, and everything else. It was all over trailers for things, it was in commercials, I believe, and this song was inescapable. And then, did you hear about Alien Ant Farm after that? Probably not. The band are still active to this day. They put out an album always and forever in 2015 and have plans to record a new album in the future. And more power to them. They're just not on my radar and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Thus concludes this episode of 7 on Sunday. Thank you so much for tuning in, giving me your time. I respect that decision. Thanks for staying with me. Please hit the like button on this video if you did enjoy it. If you have suggestions for future episodes of SOS, I would love to hear those. Comment down below and up vote some of the ones that you want to see the most. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future episodes of 7 on Sunday. I upload every single Sunday and I also post reviews, top 10 countdowns, and discography rankings among music discussions and many other things. If you have not contributed to my Patreon yet and you would like to help support the channel, then click the top link down below or else the annotation in the corner. A couple of recent videos floating right here, socials in the description, and I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.